Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Acts 19, we are using this passage saying, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. We talked we're talking about how the word of God is alive. Talked about how the word of God is um, to be in our mouth. Jesus being the personification of the word. Then we talked about how we have the right attitude toward the word to reverence it. We have to understand that it is a necessity and not a luxury. How we've talked about how the spirit and the word work together. You now the, the Holy Ghost and the word of God work in harmony one with the other. The spirit of God and the word of God do not contradict each other. Say the word of God and the spirit of God. Do not contradict each other. You know, now going to that classical Pentecostal, we, you know, and, and, and I, I, some of y'all did, but I know I did. I grew up in the classical Pentecostal church denomination. And uh, we love the Holy Ghost. And I love the Holy Ghost. But sometimes people get to the idea that the Holy Ghost operates independent of the Word. In other words, you know, people come along and say, well, the Spirit of God told me to do such and such. Yeah, but the Bible told you not to do it. So the Holy Ghost did not tell you to do it. The Holy Ghost doesn't tell you to do things that the Word of God tells you not to do. Right. Amen. And vice versa. The Spirit of God doesn't tell you that you can't do stuff that the Word of God tells you to do. They work in conjunction. In other words, <clears throat> we can judge the manifestation of the Spirit by the written Word. And it will be in harmony with the written Word if it's the Holy Ghost. If you get a word from the Lord, you're going to be able to find a, 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 that as a principle in the written word. Right. Amen. You know, it's good to be married. The Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. But he didn't say he who finds somebody else's wife finds a good thing. Amen. Amen. You can't go out and get somebody else's wife. It don't work that way. Somebody say glory. glory. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, you people say, well, the Lord showed me I'm going to marry someone. So, well, what? Well, what's going on? Well, he's still married. Well, then the Lord didn't show you. The Holy Ghost didn't show you that. Amen. So we talked about how they work together. And then we talked about this. We started in here uh, last week that the Word of God is the instrument by which our lives come into harmony with God's will. The Word of God is the instrument by which our lives come into harmony to God's will. Uh, 1 Peter 1.23 tells us we're born of the Word. You're born again by the Word of God. We know God's will by the word. Romans chapter 12. Remember we talked about that. You know, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Prove what, that you may prove what is good, perfect, and acceptable will. So we, we're born of the word. We know God's will by the word. People who pray a lot of times, oh Lord, do such and such if it be thy will. You know, now let me be quite honest with you. Unless you've gone to the word of God and, and, and found out you can't find it in there. And if you can't find it in there, you shouldn't be praying it. Lord, heal us if it's your will. Well, he's already told us in his word, it's his will. Amen. By his stripes, ye were healed. Amen. Amen. The son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Throughout the word of God, there's, there's and we, we don't, we're not teaching on healing this morning. We will be tonight. Because tonight it's our healing and communion rally. And uh, so bring prayer calls for friends who can't come. Bring the, uh, the, the affirmed, uh, infirmed, and afflicted here tonight. We're going to pray for them. We're believing for miracles. Hallelujah, we believe for demonstrations of the gifts of healings and working of miracles. And people get, there, get healed, and then we lay hands on prayer calls, and we believe that those people are restored, uh, made whole in Jesus' name. Amen? So come on back out tonight at 630, prayer and healing uh, rally. Uh, pray, did I say prayer and healing again? Healing and communion rally. I keep wanting to call it a prayer. Maybe I'm the Lord's going to make me turn it into a prayer service. I don't know. I keep saying it. Amen? Hallelujah. But we know the will of God by the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, now, next we're going to get to, we didn't get to this last. Uh, we're directed by the word. Now, let's go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. That's a big psalm. Verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, another, another scripture in this, in this psalm says that the inches of his word giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple. I, you know, I love that verse. 
You know why I like that verse? It means you don't have to be super educated to get something out of the Word of God. The Word of, the, the, the word of God will bring revelation and illumination to you, even if you're not, you don't have a PhD or a, a, you know, a scholastic degree. If you're not an academician, if you don't have your you know, theological masters or something, you can still get something out of the Bible because the entrance of His Word gives light. Amen. And then we went on and said this, and it gives understanding to the simple. Amen. So you can, you, you know, you can be two bricks short of a full load and still get revelation out of the word of God. Amen. Three French fries short of a happy meal and still get revelation. You, you know, might, you might not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but you can still get revelation. Amen. Amen? Amen. Why? Because we have a supernatural teacher taking a supernatural word and bringing understanding to it, to your spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I would say, somebody say glory. Amen. I'm glad. I'm glad I don't have to have a degree in order to understand God. Uh, uh, Brother Hagin was ministering one time a number of years ago, and, and, and apparently it was a, lot of, a place where there's a lot of really highly educated people, and uh, these doctors came up to him and said, we, we're so glad you, you, you shared this. He said, you make it so simple, even we can understand it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, sometimes we make the Word of God so complex, people don't get it. I, mean, just, I, I, like, the, I like the acronym KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Amen. We want to just make the Bible simple for people. Don't make it complex. Don't make it complicated. Don't make it so hard. That they can't get it. Because the idea is, you know, you know, I remember the Dark Ages. You know what I call the Dark Ages? Because <clears throat> all, the, all the services were done in Latin. Right. And nobody spoke Latin. Right. So they come to church, and the only way they got any, anything out of the church service is they had to look at the pictures on the stained glass windows. Mm. And all the paintings on the wall. That's how they, got some, that's how they learned Bible stories. Because the Mass was done in a language they didn't speak. Well, what good does that do you? It'd be like you coming this morning and I, I do the whole service in French and you don't speak French. Right. What good does it do you? None. No? The Word of God is to be a lamp unto your feet, delight unto your path. It's to be enter into your heart and, and give you understanding. We want the Word of God. So the Word of God is imperative that we receive the Word of God, receive understanding from it, and walk in the light of it. Amen. It illuminates our path. You know, uh, we were going and saying, well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to do. Well, let's get to the Word and let the Word light up our path. Amen. Walk, walk, walk where you can see. Have right. you ever walked through a room and you couldn't see anything? Now, it's great if it's a, like a brand new house and they put any furniture in it. But, but if they put furniture in there and you go in there and you can't see anything, um, bust your toes, bust your nose, bust your shins. Jamie and I had uh, moved into our first apartment. And, and I had gotten uh, this coffee table. So somebody worked in the place, and they, they gave me a coffee table. Well, it was a cheap coffee table. It had real sharp edges all along the edges. And I, walked, I got in the middle of the night one night, walked, stumbled through the house, and about half asleep, dark, and ran right in that coffee table with my shin. And it just, it just took a plug of a bone right out. It just, just chipped it right out. Of course, I'm in the floor, you know, ah! Janie comes in and starts laughing. <laughs> she's always done that. I got stub a toe, I'm on the floor crawling, and she's laughing, you know? But I'll tell you what, you put some light, all you got to do is sometimes just put a little night light in there. Remember those little green glowing things? You stick just enough light to see. God's Word will give you enough light to see. Amen. Now, the more you spend time in it, the more light comes. You can come in this room, turn all the lights out and light a match. It'll give you enough light to get around. When we turn all the lights on, it makes it real easy. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we're, we're directed. The Word of God will give you direction. The Word of God will give you clarity. The Word of God, what we know, uh, the psalmist said, I mean, not psalmist, Joshua said, this book of the law should not depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, one, uh, another translation says, and you'll deal wisely in the affairs of life. Amen. Wouldn't it be great to be able to, deal, able to, be able to deal wisely in the affairs of life all the time? Well, you spend time in the Word of God, where God's Word calls you to deal wisely in the affairs of life. Amen. You don't, listen, I, I'm, I've said this before. You don't need to go to Louise to find out what to do. You don't need to go to Leroy to find out what to do. You need to go to the Word of God to find out what to do. Because the counsel within the Word of God that gives you direction, amen, that direction that comes out of the Word of God, you can't get from Leroy or Louise. Because most people give you counsel based on their experience. Amen. That's why we, we look to pastors and, 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 and godly counselors who are operating under the anointing. If they're not operating under the anointing, you do want, listen, if you come to me and I don't have anything, you don't want my opinion. Because my opinion is based on my experience. You want what? You want the counsel of the Holy Ghost. 
Well, where's that going to come from? It's going to come out of the Word. See, revelation comes out of the Word. And so that counsel will come out of the Word of God. The Word of God has counsel within it. Glory to God. Now, don't reject the Word of God. Well, I tried that once. Well, you don't try, no, you don't try the Bible. Amen. Say, I live the Bible. Say it. I live the Bible. I don't try the Bible. Amen? You know, it's like going to the doctor and they're saying, you know, you got an infection. Here, take an antibiotic. How many have, have you ever been on an antibiotic regimen? It's usually two pills a day for 10 days. You don't take one and go... I didn't feel any different. Ten hours later, I threw that another 19 pills away. Well, there's a reason they put you on a 10-day, two-pill-a-day regimen. It takes all that time for that to get into your system and begin to work against the, the uh, bacterial infection that you got. And there's antibiotics are going in there working. And they will continue to work after the 10 days. Right. And if you'll do the whole regimen, you'll find out at the end of the 10 days and on into the days after, that has got begin beginning, beginning, <laughs> ooh, it's like Bugs Bunny, been getting progressively better. But you can't take one or two and go, well, it didn't work. Amen. I mean, That's right. It doesn't work that way. They're designed to do that. Whole, see, in the Word of God, the interest of you know, the book of law should not be part of your mouth. You're to meditate there in day and night. Amen. Over the of time. And as, the, as you do that, then, then you begin to deal wisely in the affairs of life. Why? Because the Word of God's working in you all the time, and it begins. It doesn't happen. You know, you look, oh, read one scripture today, okay, and you go out, you think you're going to be the, you know, a genius. In dealing in the affairs of life. And one day it doesn't work. Amen. It takes time. Building that into you. Walking in on a regular basis. Becoming a, part, a pattern of life. Everybody say a pattern of life. Pattern of life. Amen. It's, you know, it's like the, like the woman who lives with the man who beats her. He comes, you know, and goes, I'm sorry, baby, I'll never do it again. That ain't good enough. Amen. I said, that ain't good enough. There has to be a pattern developed of never doing it again. Amen. And some women, you know, and I don't understand, you know, sometimes women just rather live with the man at beach than they live by themselves. I don't get that because he needs to be beat. I like, I like the old-fashioned way of taking care of that. Please show up, take him out the back and beat him and say, if you ever do it again, I'll come out and beat you again. Amen. You know, until he got the picture. If he beat, he got beat. I like that. I think that's the way things ought to be handled. What do y'all want anyway? <laughs> with the billy stick. You know, you hit that woman again, I'll hit you. I'll hurt you, <laughs> you know. Amen. And well, anyway. But, you know, that, that was, that's, that's, that's throwing one of those little things in there, just kind of working it in to the sermon. <clears throat> so the answer, so, so we're directed by the word. Next, we're healed by the word. So look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107, not too far back from where we were. I'm going all over the place but there. Hallelujah. 107, verse 20. Let's back at verse 19. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. He saves them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Oh, glory. Thank God. You know, I, I just don't understand why people just refuse to accept that healing is part of the plan of God. God even gave one of his covenant names, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord thy physician, or the Lord that healeth thee. And you got people who fight to make people sick under the will of God. I think we need to be fighting to stand on the word of God. I think we need to be fighting for what the word says. <clears throat> Amen. And you know, usually those things are based on, well, I knew so-and-so prayed, and they were a good Christian, and they didn't get healed. Come on now. What are you doing? Uh, once again, we're basing stuff on experience instead of on what the word says. We can't go by experience. Well, I know. Listen, if we did that, we know we would stop giving altar calls. Well, I gave an altar call. So and so didn't come down. They went out and died and went to hell. Well, then you know we can't. Then it must not have been God's will to save. No, God's not willing that any should perish. Amen. Okay, Jesus came that we might be healed too. Hallelujah. He sent His Word. Who's remember talking about? Jesus is the personification of the Word. Jesus is the Logos of God. He sent Jesus and healed them. Praise God. Amen. And so healing part is part of our covenant. Healing is part of our uh, walk with God. And it comes out of the word of God. We, we uh, thank God for special anointings. We thank God, you know, that the word of God tells us that one of the manifestations of the Holy Ghost are, we, are the gifts of the Spirit, as we often refer to 
them as, uh, is gifts of healings. There are manifestations of the Spirit when people get healed, and I'll be honest with you, but, but I ounce of faith in manifestation in their life. It's just, a, it's just a supernatural working of the Holy Ghost. Amen? We thank God for gifts of healings. We thank God God loves people so much that the Holy Ghost has, a, has gifts that he can minister life and healing to people with. But what do we do if there's not a gift of healing and manifestation? The Word of God's there. We can get people healed with the Word. We can give them what the Word says. And faith can arise in their heart. And they can take hold of the Word of God and get healed. Praise God. Amen. Remember the woman that came to Jesus? Her daughter was grievously vexed of a devil. And she cried after them. The disciples were trying to get rid of her. And, and, and finally, uh, the Lord said, what is it? And she said, Lord, my, my daughter is grievously vexed of a devil. I want you to come heal her. He said, it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. Now, if you did that in church day, people get up and walk out. Amen. But see, Jesus had to find out where she was. Amen. See, she wasn't a covenant woman. Didn't have a right to it by covenant. And so he had to get her into a realm where she could get her answer that other than being a daughter of Abraham. She wasn't a daughter of Abraham. She was outside the covenant. And she just looked at him, didn't flinch. Yeah, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. He said, woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you, even as you will. And the Bible says that her daughter began to amend from that very hour. Right then. Well, so what happened? He had to find, great is your faith. Great is your faith. See, there was, no, there was no covenant right to it for her. There was no manifestation of the Spirit. He didn't walk in there and have a, you know, uh, have a, a gift of healing and manifestation. She's crying after trying to get something from him and don't even have a right to it. And he had to locate her. So he says, You're, you know, I can't take what's the, what belongs to the covenant. People give it to dogs. Amen. Yeah, but I, look, Lord, I'm, I'm a dog my, and, and I'll just get a crumb. You just give me a crumb. That's all I need. Now, I've got a beagle. Amen. My beagle knows how to beg. My beagle will come in here and sit up there like this and sit by the table like this. You say, lay down. She'll lay down and look at you. She'll do anything you in the world you tell her to do to get a crumb. You can take a little piece of, a little, little crumb of bacon, stick it on your finger, and, get, and she'll do all that for that. That's all I just got. I just need some bacon, 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 bacon. Time to see a little crumb. Amen. All right? <clears throat> this woman said, yeah, you can call me a dog all you want, but I just want a crumb. Amen. And Jesus said, your faith is great. So what happened? There was no manifestation of the Holy Ghost. There wasn't, there wasn't a healing service. Man, he's just on the, he's on the road walking. Amen. Amen. And she comes up and starts begging for something. And the disciples get irritated with her, try to run her off. And then finally Jesus turns around and says, you know, what do you want? I mean, I don't know that he did it quite that attitude, but you know, what do you want, woman? Oh, my daughter needs, I need deliverance from my daughter. Yeah, but you're, you're not in the covenant. You don't have a covenant right to it. Right. And the covenant says it's the children's bread. Right. And she said, yeah, but I don't, need the, I don't need the bread. I don't need a pea slice of bread. I need a crumb. You see? And so when people, when we have things where there's no manifestation of the Holy Ghost demonstration. Now, we've had, you know, over the past, you know, back starting with the healing, what we refer to as the great healing revival from 1947 to 1958. The great outpouring of healing. I mean, you, everybody had it. 60 different ministers advertised in Gordon Lindsay's, um, um, it's, it's called Christ for the Nations back then, but it was called the Healing Something. It was called the Healing Something at that time. Uh, I forgot, Healing Evangel or something like that. That, that. All the Healing Evangels advertised, and they were going to be in a certain city uh, with their tent and ministering. Or min and min and Brother Hagin didn't ever have a tent. He was always in the churches. But all these guys had... You know, had tents and stuff. I mean, you were talking about A.A. A. Allen. We're talking about uh, Raymond T. Ritchie. We're talking about uh, all kinds uh, of people that had healing revivals. Now, Brother Roberts had his tent, but he had his own magazine. Okay? It was the voice of healing. Gordon Lindsay's magazine was the voice of healing. Okay? And so all the other healing, ma major healing uh, ministers advertised their meetings in there, and people were coming out to these meetings in flocks. Jack Coe, William Branham, they're all advertising. And people just going out in droves. And then, of course, like I said, Old Roberts had his own. He was on television. And so he would advertise on, on television. How do you know that Brother Roberts came to Greensboro? Mm -hmm. Now, anybody know where Interstate 40 merges with Interstate Business 85 right down there? And right, uh, Destiny Church, their old building is down there. That's where Brother Roberts came. And A.A. A. Allen and Shambach came there. Mm -hmm. Brother Hagen came to the Coliseum a couple of times. Met, met in the old, old part of the Coliseum. 
But Brother Roberts came to Greensboro and held a healing crusade. People came from all over the place to get healing. And they come into their services. And you see, they, these ministers had healing, gifts of healings in their ministry. All right? They had gifts of healings in their ministry. And uh, uh, Branham, Branham would get deaf, deaf, and, deaf and blind people healed almost 99% of the time. Line them up in a row and just go down and they all get healed. Amen. And so people were coming. God, see, God just poured out of mercy. There was an emphasis on, on that gift in the, in, the, in the body of Christ. And people were coming in droves of people were getting healed and saved. But see, then that lifted. Came the charismatic renewal. After the charismatic renewal, people were getting filled with the Spirit, the restoration of the gifts of the Spirit to the church. And right after that came a teaching revival. Starting in the late 60s and moving up into the mid-80s. And we had the emphasis on the authority of the Word of God. You see, because people can't live on gifts. They got to live on the Word. Amen. The Word of God's necessary to live off of. We thank God for the gifts. We thank God for the manifestation of gifts. We get excited to see things happen in people's lives that, you know, we may not have been able to get to them otherwise in, in the shorter period of time they need. We thank God when there's demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. We never take lightly the demonstration and manifestation of God's Holy Spirit. But we also are wise enough to recognize that he manifests as he wills. And if he's not in manifestation, we have an obligation to give people something that will help them. And that they can count on me. You can always go to the Word of God. Always. Amen. Because the Word of God is always there. The Spirit of God d does things as He wills. Amen. Who knows why? We don't always know why He does what He does when He does. Right. We don't know why He came into a service. Uh, <coughs> I know a number of years ago. Now, at this particular incident, this type of manifestation, I've only had one time in my life. One time. I was uh, going to be ministering. I'm, I'm from Greenville, North Carolina. And I was, um, I was um, working in Faith and Victory Church of Greenville. Now, now they've changed their name. They're now Reimage Church. But I was working in that church. I uh, wasn't on staff full time. I was, I was a volunteer laborer. I, I mean, really tight, high up volunteer laborer. But, I mean, I would sit with the guest ministers. I'm Lester Summerall. Those guys sit in the back room with them. Sit there with Sister Summerall. And, uh, you know, drive them to and from, you know, the meeting and that kind of stuff. It's kind of, kind of neat. You sometimes just sit there and sit quiet. You don't say anything. <laughs> That's, you know, you, you didn't say a whole lot to Brother Summerall. You know, if he wanted to talk, he'd talk. If he didn't, you just sat there and glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But different ministers like that. And um, a, another church in town that was, a, the pastor was a Pentecostal pastor that, was, that we knew. He wanted me to come over and minister for like four straight Wednesday nights in the middle of the summer one year. Well, I'm praying. I asked my pastor. He said it was okay. Didn't, find, didn't know that I was being tried out to be the, the assistant pastor. And the reason I didn't, didn't offer me the job is I couldn't sing and lead worship. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't have taken it anyway because I was committed to where I was. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. He could have offered it to me anyway. And I just, the Lord told me to go where I was. I'll, I'll say, Lord, you stay where God puts you regardless of whatever opportunities come. Amen. You just stay with what the Lord told you to do. Until he, well, because if he doesn't tell you to do something different, you, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So anyway, I'm praying one night, I'm praying before, you know, I, I, like I ministered like four times, about, about the third weekend, I'm praying about the Wednesday night service. And I had a, now Brother Hagin, I, I didn't raise your name, it's Brother Hagin came up with it. Mini vision, M-I-N-I, -N -I, mini vision. It's real like this. But with that little mini vision, the way this church was set up, a typical, you know, little Pentecostal church, you had the, you had the, 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 the sanctuary, but on the side was the, was the educational wing, and everybody, nobody ever used the back doors of the church unless there was a wedding. They always came into the educational wing and came through the little side doors. So we're, they're set up like that, and so I see myself ministering. I'm on the platform. I see this girl walk in from the side, walk across the back of the church, come down about three seats and sit on the end pew over there on the side section. I see me stop the service. I point at her and say, God said, if you'll come on up here, here, fill you with the Holy Ghost. She got up, came down, I laid hands on her, she got filled with the Holy Ghost. It all happened like this. Well, lo and behold, I'm preaching that next service. And here she comes. She comes walking in that door over there. Walks across the back of the church, comes right, sits exactly where I saw her in the spirit. Well, what do you do? Exactly what I saw in the vision. I stop and say, uh, sister, the Lord showed me and I saw you. I was in prayer. I saw you come in. I saw you come there. He said, if you'll come on up here, I'll lay hands on you. You'll get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. She came up. I laid hands on her. She got filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Now, let me say this. That's only happened one time. one time. 
in 30 plus years of ministry, I've had that experience one time. Why? He manifests as he wills. But I've gotten a lot of people filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, not, it wasn't that way. We just call them up and do what the Bible says. Amen. Receive the Holy Ghost. You know, expect to speak in tongues. Lay hands on them. Bible says lay, they lay hands on them. Paul told Paul to lay hands on them and fill them with the Holy Ghost. We do that. Now, I had one time, we, we had a service, and I, I called people up here to get filled with the Holy Ghost. This girl came up, and, um, and I had about eight people up here. I said, I'm going to do just like the Bible says. I'm going to lay hands on you and get you filled with the Holy Ghost. You're, you know, we're, we're going to believe God's Spirit of God's going to come in you. You're going to just lift your hands, start speaking in tongues. This one girl, I'm telling you, she, all the color went out of her face. Her eyeballs got as big as uh, flying saucers. And she freaked out. Well, come to find out, she, she was a friend of somebody who's in the church, worked with them. And the church she went to said, if any, any pastor ever says he can lay hands on and get you filled with the Holy Ghost, he's of the devil. Now, all the other seven got filled with the Holy Ghost instantly, speaking in tongues. Right. See? I didn't know. We didn't have that crazy manifestation. Crazy. Supernatural manifestation like I had. It was, it was like crazy to me because I'm like, wow, this is exactly what I saw. Wow. You're kind of, you know, sometimes you see things in the spirit, things happen. You're just kind of, ooh, wow. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Crazy cool. Amen. We didn't have a, a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. But I was able to just minister to them, lay hands on them according to the word of God. They were all got filled. I didn't, couldn't say I saw you in the spirit. I saw you come in. I saw you come up here. I saw you get filled. We weren't able to do that. We still do what the word said. Lay hands on them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, they all got filled with the Holy Ghost. Except the one girl who went nuts. I mean, she just flipped out. I, I'm like, man, she almost, killed, she almost killed the service. I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. What's wrong with you? Then I found out later what was wrong with her. Now, see, there's no Bible for that. That people say they can lay hands on you and get you filled with the Spirit, that they're of the devil? Hmm. Amen. Right. Right. Just something they decided up, that somebody decided up themselves. You, you, you know, they had no Bible for that, so hallelujah. But what do we do? We give, so when we come to healing, and we start ministering to people. Now, I don't always anoint people with oil. As a matter of fact, unless the Spirit of God tells me to in a service, I don't. Amen. If he directs me, I do. Now, the Bible says, if any sick, you may let him call for the elders of the church. Let them come pray over them with the anointing of oil. So if you go to someone's house, if someone calls you to the house to come, you can go lay anointing with oil that way. But I, in, in, in a healing line in the church service, I don't normally do it. Right. Why? Because he said lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Well, what if I don't have a healing anointing? That's just like tonight. We've got a healing, we got a healing and communion rally. Well, how are you going to minister? I'm going to minister whatever way the Spirit of God's demonstrating. Right. If I don't have an anointing to lay hands on the sick with a special gift of healings, we'll lay hands on them in faith according to the Word of God. Word of God. And it'll be just, it, it, we can get the same result doing what the Word says. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be as spectacular. Amen. Right. Glory to God. But it's, uh, I'll be honest with you. If you get healed tomorrow or you get healed instantly, who cares as long as you get healed? Yeah. Amen. As long as you get what you need from heaven, who do you care if it's 24 hours or 36 hours or right then? Amen. Now, here's the, here's the difference. If there's not a demonstration of the Spirit and manifestation, now listen, you think I'm not talking about the Bible and the prevailing word? Yes, I am. See, if the Holy Ghost is in manifestation, there's an instant healing. Praise God. But if there's a progressive, you see, you've got to stand your ground. Amen. You've got to fight your battle with the word. The, well, he laid hands on me, and the, word, and the Word of God says, they'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So I take my stand with the written Word of God. The Word of God says, I shall recover. Yeah. See? So your mind can get involved in there in the, in the interim time, and Satan will try to mess with you and say, you didn't get anything. Because right. you're waiting for, for a manifestation. So we don't try to, we don't try to fool people. Amen. Amen. Amen? I said, we don't try to fool people. Amen. We, want to stay, we want to stay with what we have. So if there is no manifestation, then we're laying hands on you in faith. If there's a manifestation, I'll tell you, oh, the Spirit of God's a manifestation. Sometimes I'll be ministering to people. And I, I heard Dad Hagen say this a number of years ago. Well, we're kind of, we're just, we're just building for tonight. All right, how about that? <laughs> you know, I heard, I heard him say, you're, I've been hearing me in, in prayer lines laying. I, it went right into you and came right back out. Now, now take it and stop, stop resisting. Well, 
intellectually you might go, well, yeah, 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 until you experience it yourself. Then you don't have to, it's, it's, it's different. Right. I've laid hands on people who felt the anointing, the anointing go out. See, we're now, now at that point, we're not just laying hands on them in faith. We're laying hands on them under a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Feel the anointing go out and go into them and come right back into you. I mean, feel it go right in your hand and come right back in it. You know, oh my goodness. And so you try to, you try to settle them down. Right. Get, them, get them to settle down in their spirit and just receive. Right. Hallelujah. Now, we'll tell them when, I'll tell them when it happens. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why? Because right, you're trying to teach them. You don't want them to think they got something they didn't get. Right. Now, now, it went into you and came right back. Now, no, stop. Settle down. Try, quit trying to get this with your head and get it with your spirit. Amen. But then other times we're, we're going to lay hands on you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, lay hands on Satan, they shall recover. Well, there is no manifested anointing in that, in that. What do you do? You're doing what the Bible says. Lay hands on them, they'll recover. Then we believe that. We believe the Bible. Because the Bible teaches that. Amen. There may not be a manifestation of the anointing, gifts of healings, but you can still get them well by laying hands on them. Now, there's a difference by laying hands on them in faith and laying hands on them with an anointing. There's a difference. There's just a difference. It takes less faith or no faith on their part to receive, to get it when it's with the anointing. Right. If there's no anointing, it's going to take, it's going to take faith on their part. Right. They'll, have to get, they'll have to be in faith. Amen. And that's why, <coughs> I remember Brother Roberts putting his hand on the television set, putting it out like this. So now put your hand on the TV screen, put it right on top of my hand. And, you know, people mocked him for that and everything. But see, he understood People needed a point of contact. What was the contact? A place to release their faith. See, if he could get them to release their faith, they could receive. And so they go to the television set. It wasn't they were making contact with his hand, but he was saying that he was giving them a place to, to physically go release your faith. So they could put their hands on the television and set on their hand, on his hand. And it wasn't like there was some you know, electronic transference of his hand over the airways to their TV. It was to get them to release their faith. See, so if you can get people to release their faith, you can get them healed by the word. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. Remember Jesus went, y'all mind if we do this this morning instead? We'll just pick up here tonight and, and tie into this and have our healing communion rally tonight. How about that? Amen. But remember Jesus went to Solomon's porch and there was a man impotent in his feet and Jesus said will you be made whole he said sir I have no man when the water is troubled to take me down in the water because when I'm on my way down someone gets in ahead of me and then you know the more then it goes in and it says for a certain season an angel will come down and trouble the water and the first winning got healed now you got a lot of people who teach that that was a mineral bath and that the springs were 30 miles away and those minerals would bubble up now, how is it the only warm person could get healed if that was that much minerals in that water? And you're talking about people just being silly. No, an angel would come down and trouble the water, and there was a supernatural manifestation, and the first one in got healed. Say so the first one in. Say it, first one in. What was that? That was a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. It was a working of the Spirit. He troubled, the water be troubled. The first one to get there. I mean, you could be a, a two millimeters away, and, the, and somebody got in before you, and they got it, you didn't. And see, his eyes were all on that. And that's not what Jesus said. He, he asked him, he said, sir, would you be made whole or healed? And he came up with the reason he hadn't been. Right. Jesus wasn't coming to get him healed by the troubling of the water. Amen. Next verse. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Next verse. John 5, 8. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. And the same day was the Sabbath. Let me say something here. Had he not acted on that word, he wouldn't have got anything. He had to act on that word. He acted in faith on the word that Jesus gave him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Right. Had he not acted, he'd still be there looking for the water. Amen. I mean, you got to imagine, people got, had obviously become, you know, um, inventive in getting in the water first. They may have had a catapult set up where they could pull a string and shoot them in first. I don't know. You know, I mean, they, they, were, they were, you just got to kind of have a little bit of imagination. People, people are trying to figure out to be the first one in. And Jesus comes by and goes, Jesus didn't go, hey, why aren't you healed? That's, he, he did not ask him why he wasn't healed because that's the answer the guy gave him. The guy gave him the answer to why he wasn't. Right. 
Jesus asks him, will you be? He gives his whole damn thing, and Jesus just looks at him and says, rise, take up your bed and walk. Here's a point of faith. Here's a point to release your faith. Here's a point when everything around you has kept you from getting what you want, and here it comes. You're not going to get it by a manifestation. Get it by faith. Here's your opportunity. Rise, take up your bed and walk. And he stood up. And then all the religious people got mad. You'll make religious people mad when Jesus shows up in your life. Yeah. Why are you walking around carrying your bed? It's the Sabbath day. He said, the man told me to get up and walk, told me to pick it up. Hallelujah. How's that for your religious law? You ain't done nothing for me all these years. <laughs> he said, take up my bed and walk. So I took it up. I'm walking. Glory. They, they should have been rejoicing and, and picked it up and carried it for him. Woo! You're healed. Amen. But really, just people get mad. Amen. Don't you go over that uh, church where they speak in tongues? One preacher I heard was listening to Dad the other day on one of his old tapes. Well, I've gotten converted to MP3, but it still was an old tape. And... Uh, some minister had gotten around the Pentecostals and, and, and fell in the ditch, got filled with the Holy Ghost, started speaking in tongues. Amen. And then somebody came and said, don't you hang around them people. Why? You can't live what they preach. <clears throat> you can't live in victory. You can't live that way. You can't live the things they preach. He said, well, I just want you to know that since I've been over there and gotten filled with the Holy Ghost, I've got peace. I've got this. I got that. All the stuff that I, I, I didn't have before I went over there and fell in. Now that I fell in, I got it all. Hallelujah. Amen. We want him to run around in our ditch bank. We'll keep it wet. We'll keep it slick with like a, a, like a slippery slide. Let him slide on in. Get, get, get filled. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, somebody say glory. Amen. He sent his word and healed them. Glory. So if we don't have a manifestation, thank God for the manifestations. But if the Spirit of God deems it not right at this time to manifest himself that way, we give him the word. And the word will get the job done. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Glory to God. Thank God for the word. Everybody say thank God for the word. Thank God. Hallelujah. We're going, to pick on, we're going to pick up here tonight on this and, and go into our healing and communion rally. So come on back out at 630. Like I said, we're going to lay hands on the sick. We're going to minister to them. Now, if you're here today and you can't come back tonight, you need us to lay hands on you. We'll go ahead and lay hands on you this morning. Hallelujah. If you can come back, come back tonight. But if you can't, you know, uh, uh, praise God. We'll, we'll minister to you. Anybody need ministry for healing right now? We can minister to you right now. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. Well, let's say this. Say, Jesus, Jesus. is the word. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus was sent, was sent. To, heal to heal me. I walk in health because of the word working in me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.